This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International, as well as Eagles Saving Nations. Go to my website, worldministries.org, worldministries.org, and read what Eagle Saving Nations are all about, and then become a member of it. I have in the studio, once again, Bishop Tobias Nyamoya from Kenya, East Africa. Pastor Tobias, welcome back. Thank you for having me again. I want to talk a little bit on the Tree of Hope. Now, in the early hours of June 8, 2023, around 3 a.m., I had a dream. I saw a warrior seated at a round table planning strategy. I also saw a tree reaching through the clouds into the heavens. Immediately after seeing the warriors, Christians, and other leaders sitting together, getting clear direction from the Lord, I knew there was hope. Now, Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. The tree I saw in my dream that was reaching into the heavens was called the tree of hope. Pastor Tobias? Yes. You know, hope is very important for us as uh, Christians because of hope enables us to, to become who we want to become. Hope enables us to become who God wants us to become. For example, Abraham had hope, and that's why he became the father of many nations. Well, that's the reality of it. Without hope, we can do nothing. Without hope, there's no faith. Now, getting back to that dream, I said immediately after seeing the warriors, Christians, and other leaders sitting together, getting clear direction from the Lord, I knew there was hope. So, again, just those four sentences in the dream. Can you see why I feel there's hope? Yes, there is hope. Even when there seems to be no hope, there is hope. Like I said in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, we, Against all hope, Abraham had hope. Because there is hope always when we believe. Now the real key to this is seeing the warriors, Christians, and other leaders sitting together. Sitting together. Mm -hmm. In other words, they came to reason together. They came together. When there's unity, there's victory. Right now, we've been discussing the problems in nations, specifically Kenya, specifically America, and that's because the church is divided. They're tribalistic. They're based on racism, uh, political affiliation. They're not in unity. Consequence, there has been no hope. The same problems that have plagued the United States and Kenya for the last 30, 40, 50, 100 years is because we're not in unity. We're divided. Tobias? Yes. Uh, like you said, you in your dream, the four were sitting together and discussing, and, and there was hope. Yes, when there is unity, there is hope. Because the unity brings power. Without uh, you, us united, we fall. Again, if you're just tuned in or watching the warning program, television or radio, um, listening to it uh, on one of our many, many podcasts, this is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I've got with me Bishop Tobias Nehemiah. He comes from Kenya, East Africa. Now, James 5, 13 through 18. Is anyone among you suffering? He should keep on praying about it. Now, we could break it down sentence by sentence. What does it tell us to do if we're suffering, Tobias? Pray. Yeah, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't grumble. Don't, don't murmur. Don't up. complain. Don't complain yeah. it says pray. Pray. In other words, take it to God. Yes. Everything we should take to God. If we take it to God, we have hope. Amen. And those who have reason to be thankful should continually be singing praises to the Lord. Okay, that sentence. What are we supposed to do if we want hope every day of our life? Sing praises to the Lord. Continually all the time. praise the Lord. Amen. When Amen. we quit praising the Lord, then we go into depression. Yes. We go into grumbling and murmuring and complaining and backbiting. We go into sin. Amen. Is anyone sick? 
He should call the, for the elders of the church, and they should pray over him and pour a little oil upon him, calling on the Lord to heal him. So, so what are we supposed to do? Call on the elders of the, of the church, pouring oil on us and praying for us so that we can get healing. Amen. I mean, we bring up our reinforcements. Yes, we amen. bring up the elders, ones yes. hopefully with more discernment, more wisdom. Mm -hmm. And why do we pray a little oil? Because God said so. One of the reasons that we have victory is if we simply obey God, whether we know why, but we know God knows why, there's reasons. Amen. Here, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Here, also, when you pour oil and anoint someone oil, that means God has a focus on that specific thing. Amen. So we're anointing with oil. God's focused on it. And so there's reasons we're supposed to pour a little oil. Amen. Praise we want God. the Holy Spirit involved. We want God's focus. Amen. It says, and their prayer, if offered in faith, will heal him. For the Lord will make him well, and if his sickness was caused by some sin, the Lord will forgive him. So what do we do with that verse? We pray, we believe God, and, 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 and the Lord will heal us, praying in faith. Yeah, faith yes. is confidence praying in what faith. God said. Yes. Now, healing is in the atonement. It, it's a covenant. We can have confidence to pray for healing. Confidence. Yeah, confidence, yeah. We call the elders if he has sickness was caused by some sin. So the elders, during that process, if they discern we're in sin after talking to us, they lead us in repentance. Because if our sickness came because of sin, we go into repentance so the door is closed for Satan, who brings disease and death, to be nullified. Amen. It says, admit your faults to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. You know, I think that's important, Tobias. Yes, yes, admitting our fault to one another. You know, if we admit our faults one to another, that creates unity. Good, yes. Where there is unity, there is what? Hope. Hope. And Amen. where there's hope, there is healing. Healing. Where there's hope, we can heal a nation. Praise God. I mean, look how these scriptures work together. Amen. Praise the God. earnest prayer of a righteous man yeah. has great power and wonderful results. A righteous man, not every man. Yes. Not every man. A righteous man. So you got to remember, who are you calling to, to pray over you? Some novice, some person with no, uh, if we want to say he's out to lunch, he doesn't have any discernment of the word of God, he yeah. has no faith, or a sitter. The prayer of a righteous, righteous man, man, a man that does the will of God. Usually a righteous man has some wisdom. Yes. So, you know, you can, you can call anybody to come up and help you fight a war, but if he doesn't know how to pull the trigger on an M16, no bullets come out. <laughs> if he doesn't know how to throw a hand grenade, it doesn't explode. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't know how to shoot a, a, a launcher, nothing happens. A mm -hmm. grenade launcher. So if he doesn't know how to use a tank... There it is. There's the tank, but nothing helps. Amen. So, I mean, the earnest prayer of a oh, righteous, righteous man. man. That's the key. Elijah, Elijah was completely human as we are. When he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for next three and a half years. Yes. Now, I think we can take note that Elijah was a righteous man. He had wisdom. He had discernment. He had time with God. He knew how to shoot. Amen. So when he said there would be no rain, there was no rain. Amen. Because he was a righteous man. Praise God. Then he prayed again, this time that it would rain, and down it poured. The grass turned green, and the gardens began to grow again. You know, sometimes I think, you know, people might not like to hear it, but they try to duplicate uh, things like this, and it, nothing happens. You know, a person could say, you know, maybe you're not a righteous man. But they wouldn't want to hear that, would they, Pastor Device? No, 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 no. They wouldn't like to hear that. No, they wouldn't. But maybe they're not a righteous man. Yes. We don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. Amen. We don't know if they're having their, their time with God uh, relationship developing each and every day. Amen. So it's not just a man that has mental ascent. It's a righteous yes, man, man that's in relationship yes, with Jesus God. Christ. Amen. Okay. This is the meaning of the dream. There is hope if we work in Unity. 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 Now, uh, Pastor Tobias, you've, you've pastored a church many years. 
Uh, you're on the board of uh, Pentecostal Holiness. And so uh, when you come together, I think you want unity. Of course, unity can cause us to go very far. When we are not united, let me tell you, you can be doing the best you want to do, but it will never move. So unity is key to any development or any growth for the nation, for the church, even for the family. No, that's good. Even for the family. Amen. Husband and wife need unity if unity. they want their kids to grow up right. Amen. I mean, they can't be divided and let their kids choose sides, and then uh, you got you got basically war in the family. Yes. Satan rules. If church leaders who are work together in unity as equals, respecting and forgiving one another, as the round table represents, God will for give a strategy for victory. I think that's the key. Yes. If we come together in unity, respecting each other mm -hmm. as equals, God. forgiving one another, as a round table tells us to, it represents unity. God gives us stra victory. strategy, yes. strategy for victory. Amen. So you must understand that when Jesus ascended, he Strange. told you and I to be his ambassadors. Jesus isn't going to come down and do our job, but we can come together with the Holy Spirit yes. and get the strategy that he would tell us, that he would do, Amen. and then we can implement it. Because we're his ambassador. Ambassadors. And then we can bring the unity. Amen. It Praise takes God. the church to bring the unity. Amen. See, this is what people don't understand. They can pray all they want. Jesus isn't going to put the next president that you want into Kenya or America. We have to. Yes. He's not going to do it. Amen. He doesn't come to vote. He doesn't override our will. You say, uh, I guess God want this person as president. No. No. Uh, it's... But God allows it. You allowed him to be president, not God. Yes. And so people want to blame God all the time when they, but that's negating their responsibility as ambassadors. We bring peace to nations or we don't. Amen. If Kenya's going to have peace, if America's going to have to peace, if anybody's going to have peace, it's the church to bring peace. Yes. And this is one of the responsibilities of the apostles, apostolic true leaders, understanding that. The church brings peace to the nations. Amen. And so, I mean, we need prayer. What do we pray for? That God's will will be done. We release heavenly hosts to battle demonic forces, but we battle evil men with truth. Truth. Truth takes away deception. Prayer brings conviction. We have a job to do to bring peace and disciple the nations. Amen. Praise God. Jesus gave you that assignment. He said, okay, I've done it, guys. I'm ascending. You go do it. Amen. But before you even try, be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In other words, my power. Amen. Praise God. And as you and I talked about, half of the church doesn't want to hear the Holy Spirit. In fact, you had an experience where a pastor wanted you to come to the church, but he had the audacity and the arrogance, and that's what I call him, arrogance, to say, but you can't speak on the Holy Spirit. Is that right? No, that's not very right. But is that what he did? That's what he did. Yeah. That's what he, he told did. you don't speak on the Holy Spirits. Yes. Now that is an arrogant, selfish, self-willed, ignorant man. He told me I shouldn't speak on the Holy Spirit because his church members will leave him. His board will, will chase him out of, his, 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 of the office as a pastor because they be, don't believe in the speaking of the Holy Spirit. But that's where we get our power. This power, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the power. Well, this is the problem, is people are trying to do it without God. The Holy Spirit is God. It's one of the three persons of, of the Godhead. Amen. And so, if you don't understand that, you say, I don't understand it. Well, if you understood it, maybe you'd be God. You know, I don't understand an egg, Pastor Tobias, but I ate some today. Eggshell, yeah. egg yolk, egg, egg white. Nice. Three parts of an egg, but still it's one egg. Marriage. Marriage. Husband, wife, Holy Spirit. One family. Amen. So, I mean, we don't have to totally understand all of God. Amen. I don't even understand all of a person's 
components in their body because the Bible says you're miraculous, miraculously and wonderfully created. Doctors don't even know everything yet. They're still trying to figure you and I out. Tobias? Amen. Praise God. The key is unity and hope. 1 Timothy 6.12, fight the good fight for faith. faith. Keep holding on to eternal life. life. To which you were called about, by which you gave a good testimony in front of many witnesses. Fight the good fight for yeah. what? Faith. Faith. We are fighting for faith. What is faith? The Word of God. They're trying to dilute the Word of God. We did a program yesterday on homosexuality. <laughs> they are nullifying the faith of God and making their own Bible. Yes. In other words, people are becoming, they want to be their own gods. Their own gods. We set, we change the Word of God. Now we are God. I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. Yes. Homosexuals, they don't want to come under the authority of the Bible. They want to be their own little God. I can create my own authority. Amen. Tobias, comment on this. Yeah, you know, like I said in the earlier program, that uh, man is trying to change everything that God has made. And they don't want to come under the authority of God. They want to come under, under their own authority. And that God calls it an abomination. It's not what God wants. God created man in his image, and he wants God man to be in his image, not his own, man's own will. That's good. You know, this says, fight the good fight of faith, keep holding on to eternal life. life. In other words, if we don't fight the good life of faith, in other words, stay the morality of God, what it's supposed to be, then we are losing eternal life. Amen. It says, keep holding on to eternal life. In fact, first Col uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 23 says, if Indeed, you continue in faith, in the faith, firmly established and steadfast, and not moved away from the hope of the good of the gospel that you have had, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and which I, Paul, was made a minister. Good. You know, did you get a copy of my notes? <laughs> I don't know. That was exactly my next verse. Amen. Colossians 1, 23. Amen. However, you must remain firmly established and steadfast in the faith without being removed from the hope, hope. of the gospel hope. that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a servant. A servant or a minister. So Paul was a servant of the word of God. Amen. If you obey the word of God, you have faith. Amen. Wow. That's good. My goodness, I better protect my notes. I think you got a hold of my notes, Pastor Tobias. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, that's how the Holy Spirit is. Tobias has the Word of God inside of him, and it just came out just like I had it typed. Now, the next thing I have typed is 1 Thessalonians 5.8. It says, but since we belong to the day, let's be sober. Mm -hmm. We must put on the breastplate of faith and love. The breastplate of faith and and love. In other words, you can't say I have faith and hate your brother. It says, breastplate of faith and love. Now that is the gospel. That yes. is living by hope, oh. which is obeying faith, which faith. is obeying God. love, which is forgiving people. So we put on the breastplate of faith and love and hope of salvation as our helmet. It all comes together if we want salvation, if we want eternal life. Pastor Tobias? Amen. Praise God. Yes, that's true. Then I have Colossians 1.27. Do you have it there? No, I have, I have uh, Titus 2.13. Read it. Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, hope is so very critical. Now, Colossians 1.27, To whom God wanted to make the glorious riches of this secret among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, our glorious hope. So, in Christ is a secret of glorious riches. Mm. What, what is it? Staying in Christ. If we stay in Christ, we have hope. Amen. Romans 5, 3 through 5. Not only that, we 
also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Now look at what this apostle said. My suffering produces endurance. He saw that after his suffering, he grew more Amen. in the image of God. Amen. What do most Christians do today when they suffer? They quit. They complain. They quit. Quit. Because they lose hope. Yes. But he said he boasted in his suffering. Amen. Wow. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. hope. If you maintain and don't give up, that produces character, and character produces hope. hope. Amen. Now, this hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. So it all comes back. If you want eternal life, you have to have hope. Amen. In other words, you have to have faith. In other words, you have Hallelujah. to rejoice when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. Amen. Amen? Amen. I mean, I know that you've worked with me many years, and you know some people love me, and you know some people probably revile me and curse me and say all manner of evil against me. Do you think so, Tobias? Amen, yes. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yes, I do. You do, you do. I do, I do. Romans fifteen four. For whatever things were written for me were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of sacrifice might have hope. Again, ladies and gentlemen, he, he got one of my notes right out of, <laughs> typed on my, my note sheet. It says, again, Romans 15, 4, New King James Version, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, we, we might, might have hope. hope. Amen. So if you don't give up, if you hold on to the scriptures, you have hope. Amen. Hope of what? Everything, healing, deliverance, salvation, eternal life. Amen. We can have victory, but we can't lose hope. Mm -hmm. Now, Psalm 133, 1 says, Blessed unity of the people of God. Behold how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. Mm -hmm. Now, you've, been, you've led many boards. Isn't it nice when you're in a board meeting and you have unity? Oh yes, 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 yes. You feel you feel the atmosphere is 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 good. It's sweet, isn't it's it? Sweet. But when you don't have unity, you come home to Judy with a headache. <laughs> yeah, you feel tension in the board. In oh, the board tension room. in the uh, in the boardroom. In the boardroom, tension in your body, tension in your head, <laughs> maybe tension in your belly. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yes. You say, wow, we need to do a lot of prayer. <laughs> oh, yes. Satan was working Praise today God. through our carnality. Praise hope God. is the most important ingredient in a person's life, Pastor. Yes. Hope. Without hope, people fail in life. Yes. Without hope, people fail in faith. Yes, when hope is what abides forever. First Corinthians chapter 13, 13. Says, good, good. Says, and now abides faith, hope, charity. But the greater of this is charity, love. Wow. When hope gives way to despair, they fail in their jobs, goals, and ambitions. When a person gives up hope, they die spiritually and physically. Amen. This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen, president of World Ministries International. I've had Bishop Tobias Nehemiah from Kenya, East Africa. WorldMinistries.org, WorldMinistries.org. Once again, WorldMinistries.org. Join Eagle Saving Nations. Let's have a mighty revival throughout the United States, a great awakening, so America can once again be forgiven of its sins. We can rise again and bring peace to the world. Join Eagle Saving Nations. No matter what nation you're in, we need to bring a great awakening, and your nation needs to come under Jesus Christ. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Praise God bless God. you.